November 25th, 2018, Wood Run, <laughs> Wood Run, <laughs> Wood Run 3.0, um, back out to our hunting camp in Doddridge County uh, to get the remainder of the sugar maple and rock oak that I cut up uh, earlier this week. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, cut all this crap up on Monday and Tuesday, uh, trucked it via Gator uh, Monday and Tuesday. Um, brought 20 blocks in the gator back on Tuesday evening then went out on Friday morning and got uh, second load up which is only 35 blocks damn things are heavy as shit uh, today there's 33 blocks left however there's probably about five or six of them that are relatively dry because they're uh, larger sugar maples and so I'm probably going to get another 7 to 15 red oak logs that are laying beside the the, the road on the way out from camp um, you know again this is all just training wood for uh, Sydney and um, gonna have some fun with it but I've got about three hours driving to get to the camp right now with the trailer one and then um, four hours to my to muscle holler and then an hour back so I've got eight hours of time to sit in this damn truck and think about life uh, people always say that driving is bad for you and I think it's very therapeutic because rarely can you let your mind clear and rarely can you dream of things sometimes people waste their time daydreaming but I don't think any time is wasted doing such things you know mostly I concentrate on the realistic side of things and try to uh, to uh, plan and move forward with uh, life, uh, whether that be from a sports standpoint, career standpoint, or even a parenting standpoint. Those are probably the three things I concentrate on. You know, I know my girls are of age now, and uh, 18 and 21, and so the way that I look at parenting those two is more about how I can enable them to make them successful in life. Um, and uh, that's my only goal and you know if I can get them through their advanced degrees debt-free I think that I will have uh, been successful in life and that's my only real true goal that I have um, you know all the things related to the sport and my career are tertiary uh, compared to that one essential thing and so um, I don't know if that's bad, I, but I do know that that's something that I want to do. And uh, they have some involvement in the sport still. Uh, the oldest one is going to be moving to California to uh, continue her career as well as, uh, as her education. And so her ability to compete will be hindered because of that. Um, but we'll see. You know, she'll. I think she'll eventually come back to West Virginia or back to the East Coast. Um, but we'll see what happens. If it doesn't happen, so be it. You know, I'll go out there and visit her. Um, youngest, she's still young. She'll figure things out. In any event, time for wood run, time for thoughts, time for process. But I will uh, address an issue that Rotomate brought up uh, here. Rotomate asked a question in one of my videos yesterday about should he train as though he were his weaker self? Now, I can answer that question by telling you I need to give you a little bit of background. Um, I have been involved in strength athletics for over 35 years now. I've uh, competed in my first powerlifting contest when I was 14. Uh, I've done Olympic lifting, I've done powerlifting, I've done bodybuilding. I have also competed in, I've not competed in strongman, but I've trained strongman. Um, and being involved in strength athletics gives me a real good understanding of how to uh, train. Um, the training for track and field is very comparable to the periodization that's followed in uh, strength with four strength athletes. Um, and given that we are a rotational based sport, um, the, the, the fundamentals are overwhelmingly the same. Now, with that being said, um, the, the concept is that when you train for our type of sport, you need to train as close to your optimal potential at all times. Um, and 
I like to break that down into either percentages or reasonable perceived effort, RPE. Um, you can do a Google search on RPE and you'll that it'll make a lot more sense if you were to do that and read about it. Basically, you cut a log, okay, or you cut a front in a log and um, you go 75%, that's an RPE of 7.5. Um, or you feel as though that's how hard you went. Or if you go as hard as you can, as fast as you can, that's a 10 or 100%. Um, and you want to train anywhere between 75 and 85% almost all the time. You don't ever want to go 100% um, unless you're getting closer to a contest or you want to see what you got in you and you've got good equipment and you've got good uh, logs that won't damage the gear. Um, but the, the idea um, for me is over the course of my career, I have broken down, um, I like to keep my intensity uh, at a 7.5 RPE and above. And I like to look at my volume uh, when I am training uh, as what I undulate or what I ramp up and back off or deload. Um, and I like to ramp up over three weeks and deload on a fourth week. Um, and the, the, the idea behind this concept um, is that what I like to do is I, I, I set up blocks and I cut a half a log, all right? If, I cut a, if, if I'm cutting a half a log, that normally means I am low intensity and I am looking at something or low volume. I'm looking at, I'm looking at trying to work on technical issues. If I am uh, cutting a log and opening the back up with, with the turn, I normally look at that as a, a medium intensity um, or medium volume. And then uh, when I cut the full log, that's full effort. Um, now, I may meter back the RPE uh, depending upon if I'm working on specific technical issues or not. Um, but that's the basic concept. You want to train as often as you can as hard as you can, as frequently as you can. Um, and you want to do so above that 75% or 7.5 RPE. Uh, because when you're, at the, to quote Captain Ron, when you're at, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen at sea. Uh, and you want to make sure that you're capable of adapting to the situation when you're at close to your optimal performance at that point in time. Now, I know this sounds a bit technical. Um, however, uh, it's all based upon the fundamentals of, of training, uh, the fundamentals of periodization, as well as the fundamentals of, of optimizing athletic performance. And so um, a lot of people associated with the sport don't really think about these things. But I've been around and I've had a lot of association with strength athletics. And so I like to do it that way in order to optimize where I am going. You know, every, every training session that I do, I have a goal in mind. Uh, I like to work on a specific thing, you know. And ever since I've lost this weight, I'm going to have to completely revamp my swings and my stroke uh, in everything. Uh, and so it's going to be a lot of tedious high volume at, a, at or about 75% and above uh, for a long time before I cut full logs under race conditions. Um, and the, the concept behind that is, is I want to evolve and make myself better. And the only way that I can do that with a smaller frame is by making sure that my swing is optimal, by making sure that my stroke is optimal. Uh, because there is a skill that needs to be addressed before you can look at the, the strength and everything else. Um, and But that doesn't mean you pretend to be your weaker self. You pretend to be as strong a self as you can be. Uh, you just don't hit the log as many times as you possibly could, or you um, meter it back and count the hit volume. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, here's some training with it I want to get so bad. But I'm afraid I kill myself with that root ball up there. <laughs> this is what 16 hours of driving, four hours of gator logging, about six hours of lugging, lifting, and moving 
if you can get you for training wood. About 104, 105 red oak, sugar maple, white oak, and rock oak. Lots of work, lots of lifting. It's gonna be fun cutting it now.